Hello everyone, this is Tim, and I have Brady, 23 Penguins 32, as well as Alakov, Alex on the line, and we are going to talk a little bit about setting, and that's pretty much all we figured out to talk about, <laughs> so, um, Brady, would you like to start off, you, you talked a little bit about what we wanted to talk about, so. Well, I, I think with settings, it's as individualistic as each person playing the game. Each, each GM that's playing a setting and each player that's uh, playing in a setting. And you get as, as many opinions as you do people playing the game. And that's what I found so interesting on a lot of the comments recently on a lot of people's posts, not, not to mention the posts themselves, is so many different uh, points of view from the community as there are people in the community uh i'm thinking specifically of um bolt oranges to uh, chris's two posts uh recent posts about canon and saving throws uh azark 83 aaron's post on saving throws and uh the gentleman gamers uh post on premature endings in a game uh, and a lot of other people uh, chiming in with, with posts and replies as well on these things. So that was where I came when, when Alex, when Alikov mentioned the settings as a topic, we were talking about uh, by PM and talking about what we like and what we prefer in settings. So Alex, one of you, uh, as you uh, mentioned the topic first, if you want to throw something in there and uh, why why you like the topic of settings. All right. Well, uh, basically, our tastes and everything else are very aligned, but we seem to have wildly divergent tastes in setting, mainly in setting size, which is he really, really likes huge settings, and I really like small settings. So I was kind of curious why that why that's like the one major divergence of opinion we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think, uh, Brady, you like um, a lot of history, a lot of detail. Uh, you know, you like you said, going back backwards and forwards in time in the same setting, and other people don't usually do that. Yeah, well, and we mentioned before we started talking, too, or recording, the uh, a, a generational sort of feel in the same setting over time where you get um, not necessarily direct descendants of, of player characters or, or even NPCs you could do, but you've got, um, for a specific example in my D&D &D game, we started you know, on year dot uh, and then we are now currently 375 years approximately into the future playing through four different campaigns through that time frame and a lot of people, I, I know a lot of people play one setting you know, one campaign in one setting and then move to a different setting, a different campaign, and not revisit it, revisit the same setting. I like revisiting the same setting throughout throughout time. Yeah, I, I think mostly when I do it, uh, it's either I run the... I think with my Marth campaign, I ran like two or three campaigns in it, but that was the exception. Most of the time, I, you know, I'll run, uh, like for instance... Uh, George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire for a little while till the players get tired and then they want to play in like Forgotten Realms or you know some, some other setting or some other homebrew setting. Um, I don't know. I, so I guess I, I've done a little bit of everything. I know, Alex, you said that uh, you like to have smaller settings. Do you, do you know why? Yeah. yeah, well, it seems like we may be discussing a different kind of setting size. Uh, I, you're talking more about camp the length of time spent in a setting, and I'm talking about actual geographical size of the setting. Oh, I know, yeah. But, uh, yeah, for me, it's I, I really like to drill down into the minutia of one place. I, I love the, the generational and all that, although, of course, in a smaller setting, it's smaller time scale. So a generation would not be a century. It would Where a ton of historical stuff happens, it would be how a city changes over the course of however long. But... Uh, like, like, I will take one city and I'll delve into that. Who is here? What's the power structure? What are the issues that are the hot button issues of the time? What are the different political factions? What are their goals? What are these people? How are the characters caught between? And let them make macroscopic changes on of that setting. But just you get into more.
more detailed is the main thing. You, you can really make it feel like the less space you have to cover, the more detail you can cover it in, and the more detail you can cover it in, the more realistic it feels, the more depth you get. Well, I think, Brady, so, Brady you uh, it seems like you do a lot of detail as well. It's just you've spent so much time in that big setting that you mm. that's how you get the detail. And where Alex doesn't spend as much time in each campaign setting, he just it's a smaller scale, so he gets to see more detail that way. Yeah. Yeah, and I, when I was just now listening to Alex, I took the same uh, thing that uh, – took it the same way you just did, Tim, where it, you – I think the length of time in the bigger – spatial uh, sense setting it, it, taking more time and it allows you to develop to that degree in in however individual ways we, we do that um, to, to give you the microscopic flavor the uh, uh, the minutia the sense of minutia in detail in each individual space because you're uh, locality because you, because you are spending uh, so much time in it uh, that you have the time out of the game and, and the time in the game as well but you have the time out of the game to to develop to create to uh, get down to street level as it were uh, on in each locality as, as well you just have a bigger sort of um, like bigger zo- map like like a, yeah. like a zoom where like Alex likes to zoom in on things. Yeah, yeah. You, you your zoom is bigger, but um, you you can zoom in on you know different areas and spend some yeah. time there and then move on. Whereas his, you know, like a city perhaps uh, would be yeah. Alex's version. Yeah, well, and I was thinking of it as like, wow, this really fits with the macro to micro or micro to macro process of systems theory when people build settings. Is I start with micro and build out, and Brady starts with macro and builds down. We end up at a similar place, but. I find it much easier to start with a really detailed small setting and bring in elements of the wider world than start with the wide world and build down, particularly in the course of play. Like, if I start with a really detailed micro-level setting, then the players will most likely stay there for a while because there's so much detail they don't feel the need to leave. But if I start with a macro-level setting, it's going to start as more of a Tour de Realms thing where you're go where you're going to be exploring more of that setting because I don't have the micro level detail and eventually I may develop that micro level detail but in the meantime you're still starting at a macro level which is kind of odd you're like well I've detailed this kingdom in great detail but I don't have this place the town you're starting in so that basically means the players are going to want to see the parts that you have detailed and they're going to want to run around and see the macro level stuff um, well, as far as I go, I, I think you guys pointed out that when I make settings, I like to have a strange sort of weirdness or a hook to the entire setting, like you, like my Marth setting, gods are dead, it's freezing to death, uh, my burning heaven setting, the skies are on fire, and it's really a really young setting, and uh, no one really knows what's going on, so I don't really usually make traditional settings, but I, I, I tend to start big, and then... The rest of my work will be sort of game prep as the game goes on, where I'll world build around where the players are. It's almost like the world is very fuzzy, except for the big things, and then when the players bump into it, that's when it gets clearer. So Yeah, but I think no matter how much work you put into it, the initial part that you started focusing on, that you focused on from the beginning, will come through, and, that, and it will be obvious to some degree that that is the focus of the campaign, and that's where you started. So... Uh, for me, even if I they start eventually leaving that one city and they go out and do other things, they'll always feel like the focus of the campaign is that city because that's where they started and that's where I put all the detail first. And for you, they'll always feel like, no matter how much detail you put in the city they're in, they will always feel like the fact that the world is dying is the focus of the game and therefore the world itself is and dealing with that problem. is. So the way I will, even oh. if they get involved in politics of one particular city. Politics of one particular city is not the crux of the game. It's a side thing. Well, if I can jump in, I yeah. think on uh, two points. Um, the I can imagine in Tim's example that the world dying could be a, a micro uh, 
the, the response could be on the micro level of a, of a locality because that's where player characters are invested in. That world is going to die too. That world, you know, they just see to the horizon, not necessarily the globe or the continent level or something like that. I, I could definitely see that. I would disagree with the, the interpretation that I start on. I start on a micro level that, or sorry, on a macro level that there is a locality I begin each campaign in. Well, so we have to start somewhere, right? And it, it, the focus, if the focus is not on that place, and the focus is on the stuff they're going to do in other parts of the world, or in the other parts of the world, and then they're going to feel like the the campaign is drawing them to deal with these bigger, globe spanning or country spanning issues, and it's going to feel much more like they're going to identify much more with the country as a whole than they are with their one particular city. I don't know if that's necessarily true, though. Uh, Brady, um, I know if I, I've run campaigns set in city cities, and the players decide that okay, we're going to go outside the city. So all the prep work I did was pretty much useless. <laughs> uh, but you, you sound like you had a little bit more to say there, Brady. Well, no, I, I, I'm not sure quite how to say it because Alex is right uh, on on a level there. Uh, there but the uh, another level is there is an investment of the player characters in where they're from. Of course Even, there is. Y- y- well, yeah, uh, I, I, none of us would argue that. And I'm not saying you're, you're saying the opposite there, but the, I think that, that it's not, it doesn't become evident or it doesn't become a, um, a real mission or a, a reality to them to move out of the setting immediately uh, just to, to to go out on the first session and, and leave it on a, on a go to a regional, a country or regional level or even continental level. It, it's um, the rest of the world is there, and depending on the skills they chose, and we're talking about D and D, the, the uh, knowledge history um, could be knowledge arcana, knowledge religion, etc. The it depends. That depends. That informs what they know of the rest of the setting itself. So they may be somewhat in varying degrees in the dark on, on the rest of the world out there. Uh, and some of them may know quite a lot about the world they're, um, they're playing in, they're, they're living in. Well, I would say that um, you – so I believe what you're saying, uh, Alakov, is that because there is such big things out there and it's possible to go look at them, the players themselves are going to feel the urge to go – and make their characters go away from where they start? Well, you can build it the other way. I mean, if I ran Galarian, I would certainly run it more like World of Darkness, where I, I put the plot in this city, and I put the hooks in this city, and I get the players to make characters from this city, and whatever. That You can sort of try and work around it, but I, I think, it, to use an analogy, there's, like, I see it as Tolkien versus, well, I, can't, I couldn't think of it, their author, but well, I guess Tolkien versus the Dresden Files, where Dresden is all set in Chicago, and they detail Chicago to death in the course of that series. But uh, he doesn't usually, leave. and and the it doesn't feel any smaller than Middle Earth does because there's the same amount of detail, but that detail is focused on the one city, and so the city becomes a world rather than the world becoming a city, as in the zoomed out view of. Tolkien, where he, I mean, there was plenty of detail in each individual place, but it still feels like it, it, you can feel that Zoom being in a different level. You can feel that it's about the world, and it's not about Hobbiton. So it's a question almost, really, of how big is your sandbox type of thing. Yeah, it's not how big is the actual setting, how much land mass is there in this world. I mean, mm-hmm. there's as much land mass in a World of Darkness game as there is in uh, the real world, because it is the real world, but it, it feels you can feel where the focus is, and the focus is on this one city. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. I, I like I said, I've I've run a midnight setting game campaign in a set in a city, and like like you said, all the hooks were in the city, and uh, they just decided it was too dangerous, so they they left. I was like, oh, <laughs> what am I gonna do now? You know? Yeah, well, that's because you have that. <laughs> I I don't know necessarily, but if they built reason. That's why I also said I would get the character, the players, if I wanted this to happen, I would get the players to build characters that were invested in that city. 
and if they have done that and they're playing in character, they're going to want to stay in that city, or at least do something related to the city. They aren't going to go, oh yeah, I have all these plot hooks that I've created that are in this city, and I, these quests do in this city, but I'm going to leave because I want to. But if they're doing that, they're metagaming, because it's, I, or they've built their characters wrong. I, I, I don't know. I, I think that I think as an AGM, you have to keep that as a possible option. Players are going to do things that surprise you and go in strange ways. I, yeah, I, I but know. getting back to social contracts, which we talked to before, that, that was why I was saying, if you have made a social contract with them that this game is going to be about this city, and I don't want you leaving it, mm. and they build care, and they get from the get-go leave. Now, they could leave as part of a greater plot, but once they you've done enough plots in a city, if you tie the plots that heavily enough to that city, they're going to just come go out, deal with one thing, come back. Okay, but, I guess I see what you're saying. Before you would start a game like that, you would say, okay, this game is just about Chicago. Uh, if it, anybody goes outside of it, you're being a dick. <laughs> yeah, I mean... So, that's how Chicago would feel, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kristen could actually leave, but uh, in fact, there are plenty of people in Chicago that want him dead, and so he has plenty of reason to leave, but he doesn't because he's invested in that city. He has friends there, he has a job there, he knows it well. Well, in, in a lot of ways, his sort of hunt, if I can use that word, uh, is very much tied, almost like it's a blood oath or something, to the to the city or within the bounds of, of that area uh, it, itself. I, I, I get that. I kind of more can understand where Tim's going with the no matter how many um, times, perhaps unspoken, you put up no left turns, the the players or player characters go they take a left turn perhaps unknowingly not to be jerks or dicks as you pointed out or, or the uh, that's just they do that accidentally they could do it on purpose as well but well that's fine I mean we did in my Requiem for Rome game which was very much about the city of Rome they left the city to go deal with barbarians but then they dealt with this one barbarian tribe when they came back because they were invested in the city that one of them was in the senate one of them was in priesthood so they and the other guy was tied to those two so they definitely were had a reason to go back to that city because they cared about that city that's what i was saying you have to build that investment in that city and then they will want to come back even if they do take a left turn so as a as a player uh would you like to alex would you like to play in the um the localized setting you're talking about, the, the micro level, the city level, or whatever, or would you, not, not necessarily a preference, but would you would you also play on um, the more macro uh, level of a region, a country, region, or continent, or world, even? I would. In fact, I have done, but I noticed as I was doing, because the Planes Game kind of was like that, but I noticed, like, I'm much happier now that we're in Sigil than I was when we were going from one plane to the next. It's not that the game was worse then, it's that, I I mean, if you're going through an exotic place, the tendency is going to be to describe that exotic place, and the tendency of both the players and the characters is going to be to focus on that, not focus on the other stuff. So, like, when whenever we're going through Acheron or whatever, I feel like the spotlight is on, you're in Acheron, it's not on who you are, it's on where you are. And that doesn't mean you aren't doing character development or anything, but... If you're, if you're doing, I feel no need to have a trap, to have that big setting because I prefer the more character-driven, character-focused, zoomed-in uh, stories. And you can have greatly developed characters doing globe-trotting adventures, but when they do do those, because the globe is bigger and more important than them, no matter how much emphasis you put on the character development, the focus is still going. It's still going to feel like the spotlight is on the world. I don't know if I've ever really felt that the spot. Like I see what you're saying. I don't know if I've ever actually felt that though. Uh, like for instance, in my games, the world ending really wasn't the plot. That was just the background. Like the sky's on fire really isn't the plot. It's just that's just part of the environment. Yeah. Again, um, it's not necessarily the plot, but there had to be a reason that they went out here. And that re- it becomes more of a plot-driven thing. Like, even if the plot was initiated by them, well, the reason they came out here was, like, with again, with Lord of the Rings, the reason they went out there was there was a, 
problem that they needed to fix. The characters were still well developed, but the, the, their quest was so momentous that it overshadowed them, even if only in the minds of the reader, if not necessarily in the way the and like the amount of time that was spent on each in turn. But if they're going out, if they're going out doing dealing with lots of different. Uh, nations and stuff. Obviously, they're dealing with something that's relevant to all those nations uh, if, in the main plot. If they're going from lo location to location as part of the main plot, then the main plot must deal with must be in, of importance to all of those locations. And if it's that important, then it's more important than the individual people, hmm. um, because the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, and all that. I, I'll say that my uh, my Darbs Hill game is actually kind of a localized version of that. It's basically just yeah. a big big dungeon in a small town. Uh, so, you know, they, they have made attachments, they have a place to live in the small town, uh, they know some of the NPCs that are there, um, they're getting familiar with the landscape, and when things change in the local landscape that matters, they notice it more. So I guess there's that. Yeah. Well, and I guess I like, um, from those descriptions, including mine, I guess I like both. You know, I like having what Tim just described and what you just, you described before that, Alex, with the, uh, the being invested in the city, um, I never look at it as big fish, small fish. I, I sort of look at it more um, as sort of um, a road to discovery or something like that, uh, where the characters are who they are. Uh, I never think that they're more important than they are, nor that they're lost in a world that's too big for them or something to that effect. I, I, I think they are made up of their own actions, their own uh, deeds and motivations, it, desires, goals, whatever. And the world sort of um, uh, reacts or responds uh, to them in varying, many varying ways. So, and I, uh, I'm sorry, good. <laughs> well, no, and I was just going to say on a, a side note that uh, that may be personally my choice of uh, doing the, the more, the larger setting is my, uh, Ander and Matthew have called me a gypsy uh, <laughs> before, you know, the traveling uh, sort of, I guess you could call it bard or ovid or something uh, as well, where you just uh, travel place to place, not because you're bored of it, because you want to find out more about uh, each each one individually, or, or the whole area, or whatever, you know. Yeah, and I really don't have that drive so much. I can enjoy an interesting <laughs> setting, and I like there to be interesting things about the setting, but I don't feel the need to explore more than one at a time, or more than one in rapid succession. So, um, so Alex, if you were like, look, uh, hypothetical situation here. Uh, you are going to be a player in my weird-ass Burning Heaven setting where there's no humans, no traditional uh, RPG races, you know, a bunch of weird shit running around all over the place. That would feel to you probably like, I don't know, just like a bunch of neon lights and very distracting, and it wouldn't be you wouldn't enjoy yourself, it sounds like. Is that correct? Yeah, I get distracted. I was realizing, too, that for me it's kind of a personal thing. Is I get distracted by that. I feel like... Like, it's easier for me to recognize the tropes of the plot, and I also, I am less invested because I'm overwhelmed and dazzled and confused by all of these different things going on. It just, it feels crowded, it feels busy. It feels like there's all this stuff going on, and what we, and we only need, I, I suppose I'm a minimalist with settings, like, we only need this much at once going on. And if we have more than that, then we're wasting, or to me, I would, I would be wasting ideas if I threw out all these weird things at once, because some, we can only focus on one at a time anyway, or two at a time, however many. And so throwing in more than that simply is overwhelming and kind of waters down. Like, like people say about how many players you have, the more you have, the less uh, depth you can go into, so... Uh, for me, it's kind of that way with this, where the more themes you're trying to explore, or the more areas you're trying to explore, the less you can go into each one. Hmm. Well, I'd put it as... as uh, and, the more, and again, just, just like, it's very busy, it's very 
confusing. There's, okay, there's this and there's this and there's this, but I just want to focus on this. Can't we just explore that to its end and then move on? Well, uh, Brady, have you ever just felt like you've made too much stuff and the players can actually <laughs> don't get it? Like you were saying, you, you spend all, these, all this time writing stuff out in dialogue and it just doesn't come out in the game. So does that happen to you? Too many toys. You don't know what to play with. <laughs> uh, y- 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 no, because... And what I was what I was going to say, nice intuition on your part there, Tim. The in response to, to Alex and indeed your original question there was, I, I I think for me, it's not that there are all these neon signs saying you know, come see the dancing girls and and uh, come into our shop and buy our uh, you know product or whatever. It's or come down our dark path. It, it's the the fact that. Uh, they're just choices sitting there. And I'm quite happy when a group decides to stay in one place, and quite often they do, uh, to get into, to find out more about, you know, to call, the, for example, to car, call the bartender by the first name and to know that that bartender has, has a wife or husband and, and a family and, and they got in trouble with the law and have, you know, uh, one of their arms missing because of a uh, past crime. Or uh, it's down to simple economics where they don't have, as a group or individually, they don't have the, the, the coin or the money to, to actually pay for the uh, uh, passage on the ship or, or enough uh, money to feed themselves or buy horses or pack uh, mules or whatever it is to, to actually venture out. Uh, so they may have to stay economically because they their income is w- within this uh, locality. It's not it's not on the road, as it were. It might, I don't want to give the impression my games are all Jack Kerouac. You know, uh, <laughs> they never stay in one place and want any law, and they get bored. They don't. Um, quite often in the original game, we used the uh, city of Lankmar, the Fritz uh, Fritz Lieber uh, campaign setting, which was just the city and its. Uh, its locality uh, as a permanent base, uh, the largest city in the world, but it was it was a permanent base, and we were quite often there for session after session after session, without without leaving the place at all. But had the choice to go further out. Uh, Maybe or, I just, something just popped in my head about okay, so Alakov, you've had a hard time having campaigns last a long time, and. Uh, Brady has had you know multiple campaigns in the same setting, and it hard time all, having them end. Yeah, exactly. And so <laughs> maybe the size of the setting is a is a reason, is there a partial reason for that difference? I don't know. What do you, what do you think, Alakov? I, I was also going to say that I have I am a very deliberate, focused person. I like when when it, when it comes to what I'm reading, what I'm watching, or whatever whatever aspect of my life, okay, I'm doing this now, and I'm going to do this until it's done, and then I'm going to move on. So that's part of this, too. Is I, and also, I've said this before, when I have too many characters, like, as soon as I come up with a backup character, I lose some degree of interest in the current one. Not that they become boring, but it's, I get hit with new shiny disease. Like, <laughs> oh, look, there's this, and I thought of this, this is new, the grass is always greener kind of thing, and that that gets just gets blown way out of proportion with the huge setting because it's like, well, this is cool, but this is also here and this is also cool, so I want to go see that. And particularly once I've been in a place for a while, it's like as soon as the new shiny thing wears off of a place, I'm like, okay, I've explored Shelly X, now I'm gonna go to Galt because Galt is also cool. Or <laughs> well, that's what I mean. Like, so if it sounds like if you could. Figure out a way to have that, like I three cities. I have, from my experience, I'm constantly expecting a campaign to end, or not like it's going to end next week. But I'm, I don't expect games to last so long. So I feel like, well, if I want to explore this area, I have to do it now because I don't know how much longer I'll have. What I was going to say is, if uh, you ran a game instead of just having one city, maybe you could have three different cities. So whenever you get that urge to run a different game, you could really just keep the same characters and keep the same chronicle, but they just, like, they do the gypsy thing like Brady does, you know, they, get, they go to a different section. And that, you know, so it, the new shiny thing is really still in the same game and still in the same setting, and your players are still playing the same, you know. So it's all the yeah, same, which is a little different. I think the better remedy is just don't have the temptation of the new shiny thing. 
Because if I, it's not that it, I get bored with things. It's that if I find something more interesting, I become more interested in it. So it, if I don't allow myself to do that, if I, or if that doesn't exist, like it would happen in a fantasy, in a in a fantasy setting where there's different stuff, like. Uh, but like now that we're in Sigo, it's not like I have this desperate need to go to other planes. I'm happy to stay in Sigo for however long we need to be here. Because I feel like there's enough going on in Sigil to satisfy that need for new things, but there are different things without the need to go out to other stuff. I suppose I like settings with a lot of differing things going on in a small area so that I can sort of, when I feel the urge to do something different, I go explore a different aspect of the one city rather than I go to another city. All right, well, um, Brady, what do you think? Do you think the, the size and the world-spanning campaigns that you've had has improved your ability to run longer games? Ooh. And that's a tough question. It just popped in my head. Yeah, so. yeah no, it's a great question. Um, the ooh was, I don't know if it's improved uh, any kind of ability to run a longer game. I think it uh, definitely... Um, it helps. I think it, it, it informs or allows a, a, a longer game. Uh, but I don't think, I want to stress here, I don't think it's, it's necessarily the size of the place. It's the amount of, of different things in it. Um, I'm a big proponent of the uh, interesting NPCs and also interesting histories. You know, every person you meet should be should be um, should have a past uh, and should have a, a very flowing mutable present where they they are going to be acting out things uh, you know their goals and their intentions and what have you their personalities the uh, I think I think it does help I think you're right in a way that it does help with with the larger setting um, because the characters could then the player characters could then say, "Well, okay, we we haven't gone here, we'll go here," but I don't want them that to sound like chaos theory, where they're just <laughs> bouncing around and are getting or even bored with with a different place. I myself never never get bored. I would be happy running a game as Alex describes in one place for you know, untold number of sessions. I just think that's, that's a, uh, that could be brilliant as well. The fact that the world is bigger, I don't really it's put... Not even so much the world is bigger so much as there's interesting stuff that relates to us scattered all over it. Like, uh, oh, there's this NPC over here that we haven't seen in a while, and there's this war starting over here, and there's this starting over here, and it feels like I'm bombarded with loose ends. I suppose because I, I hate having being disorganized or having a bunch to do, like having a huge to-do list. Set, settings like that, you have a huge to-do list. And Andrew has said he actually wants the players to end the game having stuff that they have, weren't able to do, and that would drive me mad. Well, see, I think I, I, I think that makes it like a, the setting breathe more. It's just it feels like the setting is going on regardless of what you guys are doing. So, yeah, there's a kingdom over here fighting. and So, so that bothers you as a player? Uh, no, well, no, I, I actually said, when Ray mentioned, like, we would be hearing stuff in the tavern about, this is going on here, or this is going on here, that's fine. Uh, I don't like when it feels like stuff tied to us is happening everywhere. Like, oh, okay. my, uh, like <laughs> my father is over here about to get executed, my mother is a refugee in this area, and uh, my friend over here is getting blackmailed, and it's like, well, they're in three different corners of the world. I can't deal with all of them in time. The player on the rack being pulled apart. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, well, what was my point about that? Oh, I, Tim, you had mentioned the Burning Skies uh, setting as being the skies on fire in the background. And that's the way I see it um, with things going on. Now, not to what Alex just said with the everything is tied specifically to where you've got the uh, family relations, you know, it's suddenly everything's happening like that. That's a bit mad. Uh, that could what could well happen. That'd be interesting to see how that played out. Having that happen every single day or every session would be... And I have had that happen. The one big world game I've played in, that did happen. That's why I'm saying that. 
or actually the two that did happen. Uh, and that's why I say that I associate the two because it was like, uh, this guy had a friend in the army who was a prince who died. And so an envoy from the kingdom is coming to talk to him. Uh, and the guy we pissed off in an earlier camp, earlier plot is after us. And my mother is caught in this evil empire that's oppressing her because of her race or whatever. So it's like, okay, each, it wasn't that one player had everything going on in different places. It's different members of the party had different quests that they all cared about. One guy had, oh, my friend, his dying wish was for me to do this, so I have to do it. One I had, well, I have to save my mother from this evil empire, and all, the, and then we had other stuff. So, see, I've actually been kind of beating myself up because I don't do that enough, I think, for my characters and my, my players. Uh, like a fork. Like, there's two choices, and they're both tough, or like you're saying, just... There's not as many options as I would like, and they can't do all of them. I, see, I think that's a good, that's a good problem for a character to have. Like, do I save my brother, or do I fight for the, you know, the Night Order that I've been a part of for twenty years? You know, and, and then you have to like, I don't, I just think that's good. I don't know. That's like throwing the players in the fire and just seeing what they do. I don't, I don't know. Is that a bad thing? Yeah, it is good. And <laughs> you know, it can't. I, I just see the great danger of the events overshadowing them, if they're involved in momentous events, that the events can you know, overshadow them. And I felt like that did happen in Lord of the Rings to some degree, where they were uh, there so much time was spent on the stuff going on that the characters felt like just one more cog in the wheel. And they did do some amazing things, but there were long stretches where it's just, and we're going from this place to this place and learning about the history of it. And Well, I... So, I think on the Tolkien example, since we're all fans, uh, Tim perhaps being the biggest one, um, <laughs> the uh, or the most famous, the uh, Galadriel's uh, line about the smallest person can influence the events. Paraphrasing that, the uh, I I think you do get a, a sense in real life, you, you, unless you're you know an egomaniac or, or something like that, or an inflated uh, sense of self worth wrongly inflated the that a lot of events are bigger than you in real life and i think that that should translate in some way into yeah, the game that should work but i think because of that it seems kind of unrealistic to me when there's all these big things going on and we're involved in them all i don't know I, I, that that kind of makes sense for my life i've had a lot of things happen to me that i had no part in yeah and <laughs> so the, that's like yeah oh, that, crap. that's why i said i like things going on that you don't have a part in i don't like things going huge, or I don't like saving the world every week. I don't like every plot line ends up as something that affects multiple kingdoms and, or multiple large areas and you and you are tied to it. See, uh, I don't think all the campaigns are like that, though. Maybe that's just your experience. Yeah, that you know? is what I have seen with a big setting, is that people try to use the setting. And again, it's because they don't have that much time to do it in. Well, and that may go back to what uh, Tim was asking me about with the, the time. Um, and again, the, also with fantasy, time. because so much fantasy is based on Tolkien, and Tolkien did that, I, I associate that with fantasy as well. Which is why I said I have trouble writing for fantasy, because I expect fantasy to be about quests, not about just stuff going on. Well, what, was you, what were you going to say there, Bray? Well, I, I, I just think it, it kind of... Um, the, about the time issue or length of time in, in the campaigns with the fact that I have trouble ending them. Um, well, or I just don't want them to end, uh, but it, neither do the players. The um, Oh, crap, what was my point about <laughs> something Something about Tolkien? Uh, the, um, the smallest person being able to uh, influence events? Yeah, getting lost. I mean, Tolkien, um, a lot of that, as we know, was his um, experience. He put in writing in this fantasy world a lot of the um, uh, it, the, the actual experience, the emotional um, level of the characters being lost and just despairing uh, in the in the uh, the wash of world events. What's going on? Which is quite epic. Let's let's. Um, not lose the the fact that that is on an epic level. The the um, that to me is the individual's response to to the to the situation at hand. There's, I mean, famously, you could sit there and do nothing as well, and uh, that has consequence 
to a certain extent. Uh, but I don't think everything in my game touches everybody on an, an individual level, and not everything can be. Um, um, it, it can be noticed. Things going on in the background. I'm thinking in my mind. Um, my daughter's going to be here in a week and a half, or after Christmas, and we're going to play, and she's going to be walking into eventually something that's been going on in the background for a while. That sort of. Um, a breathing, as Tim put it in the game, um, I think can lead you into different uh, different plots. Can lead lead you to different physical places and different emotional places and different stories um, within your own game um, that are uh, they're breathing, whether somebody knows about it or not, or whether they're there or not. See, I think I think a lot of that is um, the GM's job to present things that make the players make decisions, make the characters make decisions, and how they react to things. Um, I can I can see what you're saying, Alcov, that sometimes that might overshadow what the characters you know actually do, but I, I just like the idea of, okay, here's a horrible situation, or a good situation, and what are the characters' reactions to it? Because often I'm completely surprised by what the players do, and honestly I think that's the biggest joy of running a game for me, is just being surprised. Like, Oh wow! I never thought you would give all your gold to this poor town because they're starving to death. You know, that's yeah. awesome. You know, that's going to change the setting. You know, I just I feel like there's this sort of feeling of oh, this is a pl- because it's a place in a bigger setting and the campaign is style is gypsy-ish. This is a place <laughs> where we're going to stay or where we're not going to stay for very long. It's a transient place, and so I it hampers investment. I know I'm going to be gone as soon as I finish this story arc, so it makes me less likely to. It makes it more plot driven, more focused on leave, moving around and doing different things, different places than on getting invested. Well, I don't know. Uh, we've gone on for quite a while, so uh, I'm going to let each of you guys have a final say, and then we'll wrap things up. So, uh, Brady, why don't you start first? Okay. Uh, I, I think uh, I think that's um, it's just great to hear other people's uh, views and, and perspectives and, and experiences in in gaming and what they like, what they don't like, what they prefer, um, and sort of the psychology behind uh, playing in a game. Yeah, what you want to do, I think. With the, um, I don't know. I could go on for hours, probably <laughs> explaining very little uh, or, or a lot about uh, why I like uh, bigger settings or why I like different settings. And we all three might be very much alike in it, but we just have it's just a, a different direction um, we've taken from it. I, I, I think it's a brilliant discussion on setting because there's so many different. Um, different views as I said with uh, each different uh, person in the community you get a different view on it I, I just think I wish from the comments that I've been reading especially on Matthew's uh, gentleman gamers uh, premature endings uh, post so many the majority were short campaigns or ended before they wanted them to whether they were GM or player and I, I would like to see more people playing the length of time that they want to, no matter what setting type they're playing, what game setting system they're, they're playing in or running, just be able to ex- uh, explore that uh, to their own desires. If it's a six-game session and that's all they want to run, not that that's bad or good, or it's mine, like that my first campaign went on, I, I figured it uh, average about 500 sessions was the first wow. campaign. So, well, it's over many, many years, but you know what I mean. The, uh, however long you want to go, that's how long you go in that in that uh, in that setting in that game. All right. So, uh, Alakov, you have any final words? Yeah, I, I've been thinking about it. Uh, now that I think about it, it's not that it's. I like the. Uh, I looking at the kinds of stories I like. Uh, let's take Tolkien, which I like, but not my favorite style. Versus like George R. R. Martin or Robert Jordan, where all three of those involve events that change the world, and it, where the characters are really important. Lots of stuff goes on, lots of stuff changes, often directly because of the actions of the characters. 
but the reasons they're doing the things they're doing are purely personal. They are not doing it like Frodo is because I'm trying to save the world. They're doing it because I have a very personal reason that I don't like this person, so I want to kill them, or I want to get here because I want to escape, or whatever. It never feels like Arya, who's the most nomadic, is is like doing it for the epicness or for the adventure of it. She's, she doesn't feel like she's in an adventure. She feels like she's trying to survive. And even a Wheel of Time, which eventually it does become kind of a, okay, I recognize I'm the chosen one. I'm trying to save things. But by then we've had three books of him just running around going, no, I'm trying to, and trying to avoid it. And he still has the inadvertent thing of uh, the Taviran power, which is the, the we- threads of the ages twist around him. So he still causes major effects that he's not anticipating. Like, I am here, therefore somebody, uh, therefore I trigger some uprising just because of kind of creating a disturbance in the force around me. And uh, he does try to intentionally change things by, like, I'm trying to conquer this kingdom or topple this ruler or whatever, but most of the major stuff that happens happens completely unexpectedly. Right. It, it's more of a matter of the characters recognizing and getting in the mindset of we are on a quest versus the characters being in a situation where all this stuff keeps happening and they're just, what, what, what? Trying to deal with it, trying to survive. I guess um, I'll just say it in, in closing, just because the setting is large and you know there's lots of places to go doesn't necessarily mean it has to be epic. You could just be a wandering uh, minstrel or a bunch of thieves that are just... You know, you hang out in a place for a little while until it gets a little too hot, and then you skip out of town and go somewhere else, you know? Or there's all kinds of different things that you could do. You you know, gypsy campaigns, you know, you could just you could do something like that, you know, where you yeah. and travel around and that's why all three and, and of the hire, examples you know? I used were big settings. Westeros is huge. Uh, the Wheel of Time setting, which has no name, is also huge. And Myrtle Earth is obviously big. But two out of the three have really big settings, but and even, to some degree, epic storylines because the consequences of the events are very major and far-reaching, but they aren't consciously epic. It isn't like mythology, where they, it, where everyone and their mother knows that this guy's a hero, <laughs> and he does too. <laughs> All right, well, that was uh, sort of a long ramble. This will be on two different videos, I think. <laughs> but uh, thank you guys for uh, having this little video discussion, and I'll talk to you guys later.